I welcome you here this, to this 12th Sunday after Pentecost as we rejoice in what is a very cold snap again and praise God for both the cold and the warmth. You can see from my mask that I'm hankering for the warmer weather and for the bush. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Come, all who are loved by God, come and be fed with food that he gives freely. Come and quench your thirst from the waters of life. Come and let your spirits be filled again with the goodness of your Creator. Lord oh God, God, giver of all things, things we hear your invitation. We see your gifts of life and grace. We have come, we have tasted, and we know, God, you are good. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on the past week. O oh God, who embraces us in mercy and acceptance, we recognize those places in our lives where we have been hurt and rejected. And we, we offer them to you. We recognize those times when we have hurt and rejected others. And we, we offer them to you. And we recognize the ways that we have failed to believe in your forgiving power. In the, in the name, name of the one who died, who said, Father, forgive them, we pray that you would cleanse and heal us, and help us to live in the strength that comes from your love. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace, and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble, and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from all your offenses for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We pray together the collect. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the living bread. Nourish us with your life that we will understand your truth and recognize your presence among us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. One God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament lesson is taken from 1 Kings, chapter 2, verse 10 to 12, chapter 3, verse 3 to 14. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned 40 years over Israel, seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his rule was firmly established. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given by his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, 
but for discernment in administrating justice. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there be ever. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honour, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days of evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand that the Lord's will is, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, and reading from the 51st verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said, I am the living bread who came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Lord, I pray that you will speak into the hearts of each one of us and enable each of us to hear and receive the message that you have for us individually today. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament readings for some time have been looking, uh, as we go back uh, a few weeks, first to David, King David and his reign, and now to King Solomon. And King Solomon is marked by many things and remembered for many things. The temple, of course. But one thing, as we heard from the reading today, was about the wisdom that God gave him. And we began to look today at wisdom, what it meant, what it means to us today. And what on earth could anything that affected Solomon all those 2,700 years ago, or 2,900 years ago actually, have to do with us today? We all know that we live in a time of constant and accelerating change. And in the last 10 years, the rate of change, especially in technology, has become breathtaking. And of course, no one can predict the future, but there are clear trends emerging in the world. And these trends will compete and contend with each other, and some new trends will emerge. And as time advances, some other trends will emerge and become dominant in shaping the world. Technological change, for a start, seems set to continue and accelerate further. And suddenly, cyber crime and even cyber warfare is suddenly becoming a reality. Hacking, ransomware attacks, and large-scale thefts of intellectual property are being reported almost every day. 
And then there's climate change, another major trend, which has been foreseen for many years, but which is now making headlines too, and being blamed for wide-scale forest fires and unprecedented heat, even in usually cold countries like Canada. Another major trend is that geopolitical tensions are not waning. The conflict in the Middle East continues to be a major threat to world peace, and the shift in geopolitical power from the West to the East is gaining momentum. For the past 2,000 years, the forces that dominated the world were founded on and informed by philosophy which originated in Greece, and by laws that had their origin in Rome, and by a Judeo-Christian ethic which originated in the Ten Commandments. It seems now that the world of the next century or two at least will be shaped by a very different worldview. Another clear trend around the world, and this is very prominent in our country, is the widening gap between the rich and the poor, both within countries and between countries. 30 years ago, China was the 100th richest country in the world, poorer than every single country in Africa. Today, just 30 years later, it's the second wealthiest country, and many think it's pretty close to the top spot. Disparities of wealth and other divisions in society are often exacerbated by social media, which besides all its good points, provides a cheap and easy platform for misinformation, for fake news, and for cyberbullying. In South Africa, the gap between the rich and the poor is surely a major risk to our future. Youth unemployment in our country recently rose to 46%, the highest ever recorded. And the recent unrest in KwaZulu-Natal and parts of Gauteng illustrates just how vulnerable we are. The situation provides ready and very combustible fuel for those who seek to divide and destroy, as we have recently seen. And then there's another major trend, the COVID pandemic, which has affected millions of people around the world. By Friday, a total of 206 million people had been infected around the world. 206 million. And there had been more than 4 million deaths. In South Africa, more than 2.5 million people have been infected by Friday, and we've had more than 76,000 deaths. While this pandemic is nowhere near the scale of the Spanish flu of 100 years ago, in which a third of the world's population was infected, and which had a 10% death rate, the impact on lives and livelihoods in our country and around the world has been devastating. Besides the infection, the economic consequences have been and will continue to be severe. Mental health problems are emerging everywhere. But there is good news, however, since the rate of, of vaccinations is increasing rapidly, including in South Africa. So how are we, as Christians, to respond to all this change, all this uncertainty, all this fear which so easily comes? What should we make of it? What effect does it have on us? As Christians, what should we do? And I'd like to quote from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I believe that what we need is wisdom. Wisdom from God. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is what we learn. Wisdom is how we put that learning to use. So knowledge is like knowing that tomato is a fruit, while wisdom is knowing not to put the tomato into a fruit salad. The Bible is full of wisdom, which we can apply to our current situation and to our own lives. I believe that having godly wisdom brings glory to God and brings joy to our lives. But what does this mean for us practically? The Bible tells us that King Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived, the son of King David. He succeeded his father in the year 970 BC at the height of Israel's influence and power. When God gave Solomon the opportunity to ask for anything he wanted, he chose wisdom, saying, so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. In response to this selfless choice, God granted Solomon the wisdom that he desired and the rewards for its proper use. 
And Solomon's subsequent behavior, at least for a time, provided much evidence of his wisdom. He resolved an argument over a child, we read in chapter 3, verses 16 to 27, with such insight that the people were, we are told, in awe of the king. Later, the queen of Sheba came to test Solomon with difficult questions and found that his wisdom exceeded all that he had heard about, she had heard about. His administration, his diplomacy, his temple building project, and his commerce all demonstrated his wisdom. The Bible tells us that Solomon accumulated vast knowledge, and he wrote the book of Proverbs. He wrote songs, including the Song of Songs in the Bible, and he wrote philosophical literature recorded in the book of Ecclesiastes. And Solomon is, of course, remembered for building the temple in all its magnificence to worship and glorify God. In the New Testament, Jesus noted Solomon's great wisdom and reminded his hearers that someone even greater than Solomon was among them. Jesus is, of course, the true wisdom of God, in whom we can find ultimate wisdom. And we see that in Colossians 2, verse 7. A life of wisdom is centered in Christ and in the Word of God. In the reading from Ephesians today, Paul gives us some practical advice, or gives practical advice to the people of Ephesus. They lived a long time ago and far away, but human nature never changes, and the advice that he gave them is of value to us today. Paul wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus about the year 62 AD. He was in prison in Rome or under house arrest while awaiting trial. He had been accused of leading an insurrection. And at that time, sorry, at that time, Ephesus was a major port city on the Aegean coast of what is today Turkey. It was then the third largest city in the Roman Empire. The city had been built by the Greeks a thousand years earlier, and since their defeat, had been under Roman rule for about 200 years. The population of the city consisted of many wealthy merchants, and Paul gives the people of the church the following advice. And we've heard this read today from, from the book of Ephesians. Number one, make the most of every opportunity in these evil times. Secondly, don't act thoughtlessly. Understand what God wants us to do. Third, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And fourth, give thanks to God. And then we come to the Gospel reading of Jesus, the Living Bread. Several of the sermons that we've heard recently have also focused, because this has been a theme, on Jesus as the Bread of Life, on bread as basic sustenance that we need for nourishment. In the reading today, we read again that Jesus has assured his followers of eternal life. In addition, he says that he is the Living Bread, available to all of us who eat it to live forever, and this bread, which he offers to us, is his flesh. From this we see that Jesus offers himself to us again and again. Whatever our challenges, whatever difficulties we face, Jesus is with us. He promises eternal life and assures us of his presence with us in the good times and the bad. True wisdom is knowing Jesus. True wisdom is following Jesus. True wisdom is receiving the love of Jesus and spreading that love into the world. True wisdom is knowing that whatever knowledge we acquire is not enough. We need wisdom. We need to know how to apply the knowledge that we have. The wisdom that he gives us brings us to love and share it with others. This wisdom brings glory to God and it brings joy to our lives. And so... As we receive Holy Communion, we ask Jesus into our lives again and again. But as we do this, we are assured of his glory, and we receive the joy of being in his presence. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for clarity and grace to see that you do not treat us as, your, as our sins deserve. We pray for wisdom, not to trust what we think our story should be. We pray for the grace to see that obeying you is our blessing and our reward. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have taught us to pray and to give thanks for all people. Receive our prayers for the Universal Church 
that it may know the power of your spirit and that all your children may agree in the truth of your holy word and live and live in unity and godly love we pray for your servant steve our bishop together with tabo our metropolitan and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments that by their life and teaching your glory may be revealed and all nations drawn to you guide and prosper we pray those who strive for the spread of your gospel and enlighten with your spirit all places of work learning and healing we pray for those who have authority and responsibility among the nations especially our government during this time of covid that ruling with wisdom and justice they may promote peace and well-being in the world to this congregation and to all your people in their different callings give your heavenly grace that we may hear your holy word with reverent and obedient hearts and serve you truly all the days of our life in your compassion father comfort and heal those who are in trouble sorrow need and sickness especially those that are mentioned in our pew leaflet we praise you and thank you for all your saints for the blessed virgin mary the mother of jesus christ our lord and for the heroes and faith of the faith and in every generation and we remember before you your servants who have died praying that we may enter with them into the fullness of your unending joy grant this holy father for jesus christ's sake amen i invite you now to stand as we proclaim together what we believe we believe in god the maker and lover of all things we believe in god the one who comes near and rescues all people. We believe in God, the one who gives life to every creature and fills us with strength and love. Amen. We remain standing for the peace. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Come, all you who are loved by God, come to the table of the Lord. Come and eat food with no cost. Come and drink with no money to pay. We come to eat and drink, and our hearts are glad. Yes, dear Lord, our God, our hearts are truly glad and we are filled with thankfulness because in your great love you did not abandon us in the dark and fearful places of this world. But in Jesus, you came to us to rescue us, to restore us and to give us new life. And all who are tired and burdened, all who are frightened and unsafe, all who are sick and broken can come and find new life. Hear us, Father, through Christ, your Son, our Lord, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. We remember the way that Jesus showed his love. On the evening before he died, he had supper with his friends. During the meal, he took the loaf of bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and then passed it around with these words. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me. And after the meal, he took the wine, gave thanks for it, and then passed it around with these words. Drink this is my blood shed for you. Drink this and remember me. 
And now, every time we eat bread like this, and every time we drink wine like this, we remember Jesus and his everlasting love. And so as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break. This is not a sharing of the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And now draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 The body of Christ broken. As we, in response to the invitation of God, have drawn near and have received the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, so now we prepare ourselves to go back out into the world. So come, all you who are loved by God, hear his call to serve others as he has served you. Hear his invitation to be part of his plan to rescue the world. Join the community of those who walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Lord God of world-changing love, we thank you for this meal and for welcoming us to your table. We remember that we are your children and that you have called us to share your love with everyone we meet. Help us to receive your life, walk in your strength, and follow every moment of our lives. Amen. And now may God's love, caring arms embrace us, Jesus' comforting words fill us, and the Holy Spirit's renewing presence surround us today and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen.